On Monday, the President of the European Commission, José Manuel Barroso, launched a new partnership to address a lack of skills in information and communications technology and the hundreds of thousands of unfilled ITC-related jobs in Europe. Calling on digital businesses, governments, training and education sector to work closer together to boost employment in the ITC industry, he said that despite the plague of youth unemployment, employers were struggling to find people with the right skills. According to the European Commission, the number of digital jobs, jobs based around IT, is growing by around 100,000 every year. Yet the number of skilled IT graduates is not keeping up. 900,000 job vacancies are expected to exist in Europe in information and communication technologies by 2015. The President reiterated that tackling high unemployment is the European Commission's top priority in these times of economic crisis. The next day, President Barroso spoke at the Forum for Agriculture, where he outlined how to ensure sustainable growth and presented the challenges ahead for a stronger much, Europe. In his speech, European Commission President Barroso reiterated that when we all pull together, we can see the first positive results of this response. For a better future for all, we need all our policies to pull in the same direction and support the same overall objectives. For reforming to become better and stronger, this is something that the agricultural sector is a part of. Above all, our long-term growth requires investment. And investment requires confidence in the future. We therefore need this vision of Europe, a sense of purpose that has to be supported by the political will of our member states. Later that day, President Barroso met with the president of Myanmar, Hu Ten Sein, on his first trip to Brussels. The two leaders talked about ongoing efforts of Myanmar's government for political, social and economic reforms. Ten Sein called on European member states to go one step further and lift all sanctions against his country, saying Myanmar, also known as Burma, was one of the poorest countries in the world. President Barroso noted that the reforms and the transitions are not yet completed and that much has to be done in the field of fundamental freedoms, especially minority rights. It's also necessary to address the humanitarian situation in the Kachin and Rakhine states to end conflicts and consolidate peace and deepen democratic reforms. President Barroso also outlined the EU's support to the country, ranging from development cooperation and the Myanmar Peace Center to the preparations of 2015 elections and additional support to internally displaced persons. He added that the EU will continue to play a leading role in the international community in this respect. The European Union and Myanmar are turning a page in their relationship. We want to increase our collaboration with the government and people of Myanmar, more dialogue, more and better aid, more trade and investment, and more people-to-people -people contacts. EU-Thailand relations entered a new era on Wednesday when President Barosu and the Prime Minister of Thailand, Ying Lok Shinawatra, announced the launch of negotiations on a free trade agreement, or FTA, between Europe and Thailand. The first round of talks will be held before the summer break and could be concluded within two years. President Barosu said that trade between the two amounted to almost 30 billion euros in 2011. On the margins of the talks, both parties signed a partnership cooperation agreement lifting bilateral cooperation to a higher level, better adapted to the current global challenges and common political ambitions. President Barroso presented a certificate of geographical indication for Khao Hom Mali Tong Kula Rongai, a type of Thai rice, to the Prime Minister. This rice became the first Southeast Asian product recognized with this status by the EU. A few hours later, President Barroso held talks with Bulgarian President Rosen Plevneljev. They discussed next week's European Council and the current political situation in the country following the resignation of the government. President Barroso expressed his hope that a stable and fully operational government can be established as soon as possible, following the early elections on the 12th of May 2013. He also welcomed President Plevneljev's commitment to respond to the concerns expressed by Bulgarian citizens and to ensure stability in full respect of the constitutional process and democratic values. Thursday was marked by the visit of the President of Israel, Shimon Peres. The two leaders discussed a range of issues, including the formation of a new Israeli government following elections held on January 22nd. 
the strengthening of strategic relations between the European Union and Israel, and the Middle East peace process, Syria's crisis, and Iran's nuclear threat. Talking to journalists afterwards, President Barroso said the European Union expects the formation of a broad and stable government coalition in Israel, committed to develop its relations with Europe and to a negotiated settlement for the Middle East peace process. He reiterated the EU commitment to a two-state solution to the Middle East conflict. I know President Paris is committed to achieve peace too, so my call here today is to use our energy, our capacity, our leadership to resume negotiations on the Middle East peace process. In this context, we believe that Israel should be fully recognized by its regional partners and should live in security within its borders. At the same time, the Palestinian aspiration to have its own state must be fulfilled. The European Union remains firmly attached to a two-state solution, two states living side by side in peace and security. We therefore encourage both sides to support and implement confidence-building measures that allow the peace process to move forward. And any actions that may undermine the two-state solution should clearly be avoided. We need to avoid that the one-state reality prevents a two-state solution. And this concludes our press points. Many thanks for coming.